raw honey. Go get yourself a supply of raw honey. And by raw, I mean, you need to be really careful where it's coming from. If it's mass produced or coming from a large company, it likely has high fructose corn syrup in it and honey for flavoring. So please beware of the source. See, there's a lot of grocery stores that will carry local honey, locally grown honey. If you can't get that, find a local grower and get some raw honey. It is antibacterial. It's so antibacterial, you can put it on a wound and it will prevent infection. It's like nature's neosporin. It's antibacterial, it's antifungal, it's anti-inflammatory. It is antioxidant. <laughs> most, most natural foods you'll find, most plant foods are all of these things. They are all naturally antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant. You know, so I'm not gonna repeat those you know, here on out. Just understand most plants are. They, honey is a natural preservative. Honey, they found honey in the tombs of Egypt that had been sitting there for over 3000 years and it was still good. You could still eat it. it, it will, it'll last forever. Honey helps children take herbs. <laughs> so if you can put an herb tincture, you know, and then mix it with a little bit of honey, given that as a spoonful, yeah, it, it goes a long way. Uh, honey promotes wound healing. It's, it all, this is another funny thing I found out about honey. It contains natural hydrogen peroxide. Here's what's interesting about hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is, its chemical signature is H2O2. So H2O is water with, and hydrogen peroxide is just water with an additional molecule of oxygen on it. H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide is what your immune cells will inject foreign cells with that kills them. It'll inject a cancer cell with hydrogen peroxide to kill it. So what does your body really need? What does your immune system really need? It needs water and oxygen. So do your deep breathing and stay hydrated. And you will do far more wonders for your immune system than just about anything else. But honey contains natural hydrogen peroxide. So it naturally helps the immune system. It's also neuroprotective. Um, this, is, this is another amazing side effect of honey. It has the ability to protect the nerves from damage. So, you know, if you've got any kind of nervous disorder, if you have any kind like MS or cerebral palsy or, uh, you know, any kind of the, you know, anything that's attacking the nervous system, like uh, um, even some of the audio, autoimmune diseases out there, start taking some raw honey. Oh, it's also wonderful for allergies if you get local honey. <laughs> and it gives you an instant energy boost. If you're an athlete, you know, take one of those little vials with you instead of goo, put honey in it. <laughs> it's fantastic. Ginger. Ginger root is a very, very powerful herb, very powerful healing herb. It's wonderful for nausea, uh, especially morning sickness. If you're prone to morning sickness, just start taking some ginger. Just start eating a little, you know, little piece of fresh ginger or even candied ginger if you can't take it any other way. Ginger will lower blood sugar. It, uh, it's wonderful for indigestion because it speeds up you know, the, your stomach contents emptying. Uh, it reduces menstrual pain. It's an overall pain reliever because it's got a little bit of a stimulant. It improves brain function because it's a stimulant. It is also anti-cancer and antibacterial, especially for or the types of bacteria that uh, are harbored in the mouth. So really good for oral bacteria. And you can get ginger in a whole form like this and just use a spoon, the edge of the spoon to scrape the skin off of it, slice it up, dehydrate it, powder it, whatever you have to do, or just, you can even just slice it up and dehydrate it and store it like that. And then just, you know, break off a piece and chew on it if you need that. Apple cider vinegar, there are so many videos to show you how to make your own apple cider vinegar. If you're dehydrating apples, for example, and you've got one of those peelers and you're coring your apples, um, take the peels and take the cores and make apple cider vinegar out of it. It's fantastic. Apple cider vinegar is antibacterial. It's a wonderful preservative. We use it for making, you can make herbal medicines with uh, apple cider vinegar, just like a tincture. Um, they are wonderfully probiotic if you don't cook it. Um, it aids digestion as a result. It promotes fat burning and weight loss. It decreases your blood sugar levels, and it can also help reduce cholesterol in the body. So 
not only is it really, really wonderful to have on hand in order to make your medicines with and in order to preserve things with, but it also has its own health benefits. Salt. I make sure I have plenty of salt on hand and I have several different kinds. I have the Himalayan salt that I like to use just for cooking because I just like the flavor. Um, I have sea salt that I use in preparations. For example, I make my own saline solution if you need to flush the eyes or, or, uh, or the nasal passages or even the ears with salt water. Um, just a really good sea salt is excellent for that. It's also great if you can store Epsom salts that have magnesium in them. Uh, wonderful for soaking sore muscles and joints. Uh, they can also help, you know, with muscle cramping for the, you know, if you're soaking with it. Um, salt is, it, a lot of people say, you know, well, I can't have too much salt because I have heart problem. Let me tell you, that has one of the worst piece of advice that ever came out of the medical profession because salt is absolutely necessary for your heart to function. And having a proper balance of electrolytes in your body prevents heart disease. So it'll prevent muscle cramping. It improves sleep. It helps you stay hydrated. It combats heat stroke and exhaustion because it is an electrolyte. Uh, salt water mouth rinse is wonderful for oral infections and sore throats. If you have tonsillitis, you know, gargle with salt water, it helps. Um, it also can cleanse the eyes and the sinuses and help hydrate your eyes. You know, we use saline solution. If you've ever used a neti pot or any kind of nasal irrigation, use salt water. And, and it's wonderful for cleaning the ears. If you've ever had your ears plugged up or you have excess earwax, then put hydrogen peroxide in your ear and let it sit for about 15 minutes and then squirt it out with warm saline solution. And you can make it yourself just pure filtered water and salt. So that works wonderful. Salt is really, really important to have on hand. I keep a lot of onions on hand. And the reason I keep onions is because they will do everything garlic does. They're just a lot more mild. They're not as potent as garlic. So if you ever run out of garlic, but you need the effects of what garlic does, use onions. Onions can contain a lot of the same sulfuric compounds. They are both part of the allium um, family. They uh, they're just incredible. They help relieve mucus congestion. Uh, you know, if someone's really struggling with pneumonia or something else, you can do an onion poultice on the chest. Just put it, you know, you cook some onions down and you just take warm cooked onions. You don't want them too hot because you don't want them to burn, but you can put them right on their chest and put a warm compress over the top and they'll breathe those vapors in, but it just breaks up the mucus in the chest and, you know, and helps them expel all of that extra mucus wonderful, wonderful, wonderful plant to have on hand. So, and, you know, onions can be stored naturally, just dehydrate them and, uh, and then use them that way. Or you can store them whole and fresh, which is great. They open up the breathing passages and the sinuses like nobody's business. If you have a sinus infection, go chop an onion and you'll see what happens. <laughs> It'll make anything drain. 